The Mobile Lytics Academy series is focused on the fundamentals of League of Legends, curated by our challenger-level players. By focusing on these basics, even the most skilled high elo players can improve their game and climb the ladder. Vision is one of the major pillars of League of Legends. It helps set up both aggressive and defensive plays. This makes Vision especially important in the early game because changing the outcome of one play can help set the tone for the rest of the game. Wards are most impactful when they're placed with a purpose. So let's go over different ward locations to find out which makes each one useful. On blue team, this push ward is useful to confirm and react to incoming dives. Ward this when you're about to get pushed in and have a bad feeling about getting dove. This way you know if you're getting ganked ahead of time and can back off before the wave hits your turret. For red team, this spot's a nice ward when you're pushing aggressively and are expecting the enemy jungler to come through lane or from Krugs. It will spot him in the brush waiting to loop around or charge straight through lane. For blue team, this is a standard defensive ward for when the wave is even. The most successful gank jungler can get off here is if they loop around behind you. This ward spots them so you can get away safely. And for red team, this ward serves a similar purpose to the Krug ward. If you're pushing aggressively, then this ward allows you to see if a jungler or midliner is trying to wrap around through their jungle to get behind you for a gank. For blue team, this ward is similar to the red brush's tri brush ward. Ward here if you're playing aggressively, because it lets you see if the jungler is trying to collapse on you from the jungle if you're pushing to the enemy tower. On red side, this is a standard defensive ward against ganks for when the wave is in the middle of the lane. In this position, typically the jungler's best chance to pull off a gank is to loop around behind you for a flank. This ward lets you see it coming before it's too late to get away. For blue side, this ward serves two purposes, and both are for when you're getting pushed into your tower. First is to keep an eye on the enemy support or AD carry that's using the bush to harass. Second is to see if the jungler is getting into position to gank you after you got pushed into tower. And for red team, ward this brush when the wave is going to be even or slightly on your side to spot lane ganks early and to prevent the enemy support from using fog of war to engage or harass. The red side lane brush is the same as the blue side lane brush, but it's reversed for both teams. To prevent lane ganks from happening, blue team wants to ward this when the wave is closer to the middle or slightly on their side, and red team only wants to ward this if they're getting pushed in constantly. For blue team, this is a good ward to get rid of blast cone ganks, and to see the jungler trying to sneak into the river brush with a dash. And for red team, if you're on the back foot and always pushed into tower, this is a good ward if you think the enemy jungler or mid laner is coming to dive you. It gives you just enough time to back off and escape the dive if you react quickly enough. And the last ward to cover for blue side is if you're always pushing aggressively into the enemy tower, you can ward this spot to see if the jungler is coming for a gank after gromp or blue buff. Junglers like to wait here and hard engage when you commit to harassing on your tower or try taking a plate. And for red team, this is a worse version of the blast cone ward to spot ganks. Only ward here if you're scared that the enemy jungler might camp the brush. That way you can tell exactly when they leave or if they're still looking to dive you. When you understand what each ward is for, you'll find yourself warding with a purpose rather than warding in a random spot just because your totem is up. If you're not a support, then you only have a few wards to go around, so it's important that you use them wisely. Thanks for watching this episode of the Mobile Lytics Academy series. Now go practice these concepts in a game, and don't forget to use the pregame feature to give you the intel you need to win.